Okay, that's me. That's me. I'm glad to be here. Thanks to the organization. It's a great pleasure, a real great, great pleasure to be with all of you today. Now, let's start with the, with the big word, sustainability. Do we really think we know what it means for, for our businesses? Uh, well, yeah. Okay, we all say that it's not an empty word, that it's not supposed to be a fashion, that it's not to be, supposed to be something politically correct, that it's uh, not greenwashing. Fine. Uh, what I want to stress today is that it shouldn't be a corporate strategy either. I'll come back to this, but this is uh, an important thing to start with. Let's go back to basics. What do we mean by sustainability? The usual, tri <coughs> excuse me, the usual triple bottom line. Okay, we have uh, companies that have to be profitable. We have companies that have to be working for social progress. We have companies that have to be environmentally respectful. All that maximizing what we have, all the resources, but in a way that we leave further future generations to do, to do the same. Okay, that we all know. But these days, things are changing very, very fast, basically for two reasons. One, social demands. And the second, a new perspective as far as uh, the economy, a low carbon economy. I'll come back to social demands. What I'm trying to stress here is that content really matters, and it matters a lot. The success of COP21 is not only about talking uh, and fighting climate change. It's about representing something different. It might not have been a huge, detailed success, but it's enormous as far as the degree of, uh, of agreement. But sustainability is not a consequence of an agreement. Sustainability is a day-to-day -day business. It's all about each one of us, each company, everyone, working with some criteria that I'll try to pass on to you. Some of us are already working hard in that respect. Uh, this year, ACCIONA will be carbon neutral, for instance. But again, it's not one, it's all trying to do the same thing. And those social demands I was referring to, before, there were some prophets before, there were some gurus. Now, it's practically a couple generations that are completely sure of the philosophy they want to back. All these things are given to them. And they are hyper-connected people, not just, uh, as I say, activists in one way or another. These guys have iPads, these guys have iPhones, they have desktops they have the way to reach practically every corner of this world and every person in this world. So, in a way, they're competing with us, executives. And it's a very tough competition because they demand, they are aggressive, they are really serious about things, they inform and spread the good news, but they also spread out the bad news. Remember Jeff Jarvis when he wrote down Dell sucks? Well, that was a big mess for that company. It was just a tweet, but it ended up being a disaster for them. So we shouldn't underestimate these people because it's every one of us in, in reality. Um, what else? Look what happens when technology is also applied to, to that. This happened in, in my country. A bunch of people with two or three good technology gurus started filming this. And they said, well, we don't have enough people for a demonstration. Everything is completely, all the streets are empty. But let's do something about it. Instead of just calling one or two of those persons demanding, let's use holograms and see what happens. It was the very first demonstration worldwide like this. And you think, well, that's nice, that was an interesting thing. Every newspaper gave credit to this idea, followed this idea, 
but not just newspapers, also magazines, CNN. Thousands of people marched to protest a new law. But they say endangers civil liberty. But none of them were actually there. Not your typical political rally. A unique way to express their discontent. The world's first holographic protest. Activists in Madrid held a demonstration via hologram. Hologram tüntetü. Hologram tüntetü. Manifestation virtuelle à Madrid. Hologram projection policy. Spain is a suit. Via a website that allowed anyone, anywhere to take their image, convert themselves into an apparition. Subiendo sus imágenes, subiendo sus gritos, subiendo sus pancartas. Recreando a miles de personas reales. And it opens up some doors and capabilities that I never thought were possible. The underlying argument is that holograms have more rights than humans. I mean, that's kind of another part of the of the protest, which I have to say has it's quite it's quite impactful. You can't arrest the hologram, right? La protesta tuvo una audiencia global de más de 800 millones de personas. More than 800 million people. Who made it? Two guys. 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 Two Again, social demands, activists, really aggressive ones. It's a brand new world as far as the personality of those people. And each one of us should be the same. Technology and access, okay? Now, who are they or who are we? Okay, 50% prefer brands with a goal. 66%, as you can see there, would pay more for socially responsible products. 58% if it comes from an environmentally respectful brand, 56 if the brand has social values, and 72 would pay even more for products from a brand it trusts. Pick just the key words. Goal, socially responsible products, environmentally respectful brand, social values, trust. That's the new world. That's the new world we all belong to, okay? Because we're talking about winning stakeholders who have an increasingly active role in corporate strategy. In fact, stakeholders are now behaving as shareholders, in a way. They are into the executive side of every single company, of every single institution, of governments, as we've seen before. So, let's take this very, very seriously. Because we are at a progressive, new, social and business model which has one more very important characteristic, which is sustainable companies are more profitable. Sustainability pays back. We all, all companies that follow the sustainable path are not only more attractive, but they do better. And it's a fact, as you can see there too. And all this brings me to my first conclusion, which I, I really take into I mean, it's really important for, for me. Sustainability is the core business of the company. But I'm not talking about Acciona. I'm talking about every company in every sector, no matter what product they make. Sustainability is the business. Because that's the world we're living in. If someone or some company is not sustainable, they're out of business, whether they like it or not, sooner or later. So sustainability, again, is the core business. Now. Now we know what we're working on, but if you don't communicate that, big deal. You've gone nowhere. Well, good communications, we all know what it means. You have to be credible, you have to go viral, and you have to be concrete as far as facts and uh, highlight what's tangible results for, for a company. Credible, yeah, bonding with uh, stakeholders, but especially in-house. That's what's really important. Viral, with that technology, we've just seen a good example. There's nothing else we can think about. And facts and highlights, especially stories, are a crucial issue. Because how are we going to do this? We have to be effective, we have to, be, to adapt to this context, and we have to be hyper-connected, as I've said before. Which brings me to the first step in that strategy, brand storytelling. 
the end of advertising is here. The traditional advertising is old and ailing. It's all about experiencing experiences, conveying your experiences to people. It's all about stories. It's all about image. It is not true that people are in a hurry. It is not true. People have all the time in the world if it's a good story, if they identify with you, if they believe in what you say, if that expresses exactly one solution to one of their concerns. Remember what Tom's did, for instance? Uh, this was a beautiful, beautiful campaign. One day without shoes. Basically, uh, if you were barefoot and you tagged your message saying Tom's and one day without shoes, one pair of shoes would be sent and given to a kid in a third world country. We've heard this morning also about Patagonia. That was smart, a bit more tricky, but it was really, really smart, so I won't get into it. And this is the type of thing we do. We just... Mm, refurbish a big national museum, the archaeological museum, but we, instead of just saying, we've done this, it's cost this much, and this are the amount of visitors we're going to be having, well, we try to, if I finally have it going, there we go, we tell the story, and we use all our channels to convey that story to, to everyone. Past and future come together in Spain's National Archaeological Museum, taking on the challenge of history. Yo creo que en general era todo complejo. El hacer la obra por fases, con exposición temporal, visitantes, clases de demoliciones, el montaje expositivo. New spaces now welcome the public. A museum of the future in which thousands of years of history can be discovered. Este es uno de los puntos que más se nota la diferencia del antiguo museo al nuevo museo es la recuperación de los dos patios. Historical artifacts, silent witnesses to the renovation. Había elementos del propio edificio que no se podían desmontar, que tenían que permanecer aquí durante todo el proceso de la ejecución. More than one and a half million priceless artifacts were relocated. The opportunity was taken to restore many of them. Cada pieza era un mundo. Lo complejo era la coordinación entre los departamentos, la empresa de traslados, la pieza donde debía ir, si se trasladaba a la otra parte del museo. History in a new environment, unique for its light, eco-efficiency and accessibility. Bueno, este es el antiguo acceso del edificio. Era prácticamente imposible que alguien con movilidad reducida pudiera acceder a la, a la exposición sin tener serios problemas. Ahora se ha conseguido un acceso total al edificio. Modernization at the service of history through the centuries. Evidentemente se han dotado de instalaciones que antes no disponía. No tenía una red de datos, no tenía seguridad, la climatización también era bastante obsoleta. Steel. Natural stone and precious wood have turned the walk through the past into an impressive tunnel of time. Tanto el visitante como el trabajador lo que encuentran ahora es un edificio que aunque es de finales del siglo XIX se ha actualizado al siglo XXI. A new way to experience history. So, brand storytelling. Number two, mobile marketing, applications, and virtual reality. Do you know that our human mind processes 60,000 times faster visual data than text? That's quite a striking figure. Or, between 70 and 90% of the feelings and emotions created by a product, by the ad, of a product, 70 to 90 percent of that depends on the color, on the color of the product. So much for visual reality. It's all about that, content is all about that. And these days, things are changing fast. You've all seen this picture, but I just love it. I mean, it's only what, eight years time? It's only 11 years ago? It's the Welcome ceremony of the two last popes. Look at the way it looks. It's something really, really special. Nine out of ten internauts saw a video online this month. 
And a mobile user interacts on average 119 times when consuming brand content versus 70 times by a desktop user. Again, big figures. How does mobile translate into marketing? Well, these are the naughty ones with petrol and all that stuff. But it works. OK, these guys wanted to sell Scape and Taurus. Ford did a good job. They put this number. You would give your uh, facts about you. Dealers would tailor everything they're offered to your needs. And it increased 15% the sales, representing millions in sales. Again, these guys spend 9.5 liters of diesel per 100 kilometers. These guys, too, these guys were even more aggressive. They said, oh, we are Silverstone, the British Grand Prix. Now, let's take advantage that Monaco has been a success, so let's start using messages to, uh, to sell tickets to our show. And there you go, 680% ROE, which is quite a, quite a result. And, of course, I had to talk about my own ball game. My car, which is 100% eco-powered, and we just ran, for the second time in a row, the Dakar series and the Dakar rally. That was tough, but it was the first time. No one has done it before. We built the car. Nobody, uh, it's not a car, a Mercedes car or a Toyota car. We built it because we believe it can be done. And it's been our engineers, it's been our, our people doing so. And um, we're very, very proud of that. And it's, it's really something very special. And I guess it's the best way to demonstrate that things can be done. It's uh, what Nike says, I mean, just do it. And there you go, that's what we did. This was Argentina, Bolivia. In the official numbers of the organization, after Peter Hansel and Carlos Sainz, probably the two top drivers and the two top cars, out of the 564 participants, we were the third most followed all over the world. 168 TV stations, about, uh, I think it was 20 million people uh, following us and uh, what we were doing. So imagine what it means from, you know, investment return relationship ratio in that respect. It was simply uh, great. But we are, we're talking about mobile figures here. And whenever the video finishes, I'll, I'll give you some, some striking facts. Let's do it right away, otherwise I ran out, I ran out of time. Out of the 55,000 visits, believe me, it's only 10 days, huh? to our web, 60% came from a mobile device. 47 followers on social media, 71% communication channels come from mobile devices. And videos of Acciona Dakar played 310 thousand times, while well, 65 of them by mobile devices. And about virtual reality, these are the supposed to be estimated sales of headsets in the near future. It's a BI intelligence report, it's quite striking. And this is going to change the experience of brand content very, very shortly. We already use it in our uh, events and it works uh, fantastically well. Imagine when, when you get people into the big infrastructures we build the way it works. And finally, together with or the brand storytelling, together with mobile, okay, let's forget about paper. It's integrated instantaneous and multi-channel sustainability reports. We have to be transparent and accessible, but do it in the current way. PepsiCo did it. It did link to their sustainability channel, but what's important, they, they simply did it. We do it all the time. Everything is interconnected to social networks, to our webs. Very simple facts, very straightforward. It works, and it works wonderfully well. That's why we are supposed to be number one and the most effective ones in, in, uh, in the IBEX 33 and uh, 35 in Spain. And finally, finally, last but not least, employer advocacy. You can be great, you can sell a fantastic uh, product, you can be very sustainable in the way you present things. If your people don't believe in what they're doing, and if, if they don't convey to others that they're happy, working for a company that acts in such a way, you've gone nowhere. They mean empathy, they mean authenticity and credibility. It is absolutely at, of utmost importance to have them involved. We did this campaign about the day, uh, World Water Day. Um, we just came out with our ads, but it was through 
our social networks, the whole thing went really, really, really fast. Why? Because 35,000 people started just bombarding all over the place, the idea of being proud of working for that, for that company. Volunteers. We have volunteers in many countries. I'm going to skip this and reach uh, the uh, conclusion. So if we have about 20 different uh, countries, about 2,000 people working all over the place, if we are sustainable, because we believe in what sustainability means, if we are coherent according to our brand uh, deeds and to our corporate policies, if we communicate accordingly and our employees follow, then we're in good shape. Because building a brand is not about just uh, having something you can boast, you can show off about. Building a brand is having others talk, talk about you. That's what really counts, and that's what we do. It's not just spending loads of money into ads. It's having everyone identify with you. It's to externalize through our image a purpose, a real purpose and the aims of our work, which also identify with the times we're living in, with the people and the society we want to belong to. So that's why your brand, you as a brand, and you are the brand basically mean the same, the same to us. I hope many follow. Thank you very much indeed.